Um, so in this session specifically, I'll, I'll show you how you can bring your own data using Azure Cognitive Search and Azure Open AI. And this app we built is related to Azure communication services in general. So we have some sessions related to AI and uh, previously they're all delivered by my colleague Dan Waldeen and he is the lead of the series. Uh, previously, if you check out the videos recorded, you can see that we show how you can integrate OpenAI, how we can create the Azure OpenAI service and uh, also create the GPT prompts to convert natural language to SQL. And last week we talked about how you can create prompts to generate completions for email and SMS messages. This week, as I mentioned, we will talk about how you can bring your existing data or how you can bring your own company data using Cognitive Search and OpenAI. Um, and we also have other topics in, in, in these series in the upcoming weeks. Uh, some of them are related to communication features such as creating ACS resource for your solution or making a phone call with uh, ACS or sending email SMS messages with Azure communication services. And finally, we also have some uh, topics related to bring organizational data into your uh, apps. And these topics are generally about, uh, we're covering uh, Microsoft Graph and the things you can bring into your app using Microsoft Graph, such as integrating your organizational data to Azure OpenAI service with Microsoft Graph, signing in a user and getting an access token in your organizational data, using Graph to retrieve files, chats, messages, and uh, to Teams, and using Graph to retrieve emails and calendar events for your solution. Let me quickly show you a video how our app looks like, so you'll have a better understanding. I, and in a second, I will show the live app as well. But here's what we're doing in the app. So in each item, we can select view relevant uh, content and we can uh, create a new Teams chat. We can also see emails uh, and we can view email message. We can see the calendar items uh, related to that uh, item. We can see files. And um, we can also uh, go through all sort of information and we gather all of them using graph. We can run custom query and we can get related items about that query. We can reset the data. And last week I showed you this feature, co uh, contact customer. We can either call the customer or we can actually generate email and SMS for the customer. And this is consuming Azure Open AI behind the scenes. And we can um, tell a little bit about the message we want to put in and Azure OpenAI will generate you a email or SMS template. You can send it out. And this is pretty much what our app is doing. And it's time for the real demo. Let me quickly switch to um, my demo. Here it is. And I also want to show this reel. So in today's session, we will specifically focus on this support uh, part of the app. This part is the part that we are leveraging from Azure Cognitive Search and using Azure OpenAI. And here in general, if we ask questions, we can actually receive some answers from the existing documents that are living currently in a blob storage and we can search about them. And obviously the integration is never perfect and I'll show you how you can make it a little bit better, maybe not perfect, but a little better. For example, if you ask, if you ask questions like how should I handle a company refund? Uh, a standard warranty pro. I think someone is speaking. Okay, so when I ask a question in this format, um, I am not able to receive any answers. And uh, assuming if I change the format a little bit, like how should I handle a refund request, for example. Now I can receive a an information, but if I say, for example, a, hand, a refund request again, I'm assuming I won't be able to receive an answer because 
this search is currently using the uh, key uh, uh, keyword search, and you can actually uh, bring this into a combination of hyper search with vector search, and that will make your solution a little better. And I also want to show you a result from another uh, document, for example, uh, how do I install a clock? This is also one of the existing documents we have in the app. And this is supposed to bring me an accurate answer. Yeah, as you see. So how did we build this in our app? Let me first walk you through the code and then I will show you how we built the cognitive search part as well. In our app, we have customer documents, which are, uh, as I mentioned earlier, are living in the blob storage. And we have uh, cognitive search on top of the blob storage where we can do the keyword search at the moment. And in our API routes, uh, that TS, we have a bunch of functions. Last week, we went through the uh, SMS and email completions. And this week, we will talk about complete uh, bring your own data. And uh, when we um, try to get answer from the get help part, we are actually calling this router and we are directly calling complete BYOD function. And inside the BYOD uh, function, we directly call uh, OpenAI, different than the other functions. The reason is that we have a system prompt, but we don't have a user prompt because we are mainly searching everything inside our documents. Here, the only information we are pro providing is uh, you're an AI assistant that helps people find information. And when we are calling the OpenAI, in uh, this case, in the USB YOD case, we are actually going inside uh, Azure OpenAI and bring your own data. And we are calling get Azure OpenAI, bring your own data completion. And inside here, this is the place we actually handle the connection between Azure Cognitive Search and also um, OpenAI. Here we have all of our keys and, uh, related to OpenAI and Cognitive Search. We make the fetch for the OpenAI and uh, we also connect with Cognitive Search here. And finally, we return the data when you receive from the Cognitive Search. And uh, what uh, so what makes the biggest difference here is mainly uh, putting the data in blob storage and also creating the cognitive search uh, schema on Azure and connecting with uh, co cognitive search through our custom apps is not actually uh, that complex. Um, let me also quickly walk you through how we actually upload our existing documents. Let me go. Reveal this in Finder. Here are our documents, and we have a bunch of documents available here. How we can actually upload this on Cognitive Search and make search on top of them. Here is how. So uh, this is Azure OpenAI Studio, and if you want to play around with this, you have to create Azure OpenAI service on Azure, and then you have to create deployment uh, model. And when you create a deployment model, it's available here. I have two of them. The first one is about GPT-35 Turbo. The second one is text embedding ADA. I will tell you why, but I have two deployments in a second. In the chat experience, if you've never uh, deployed anything to Azure before, if you never worked with blob storage before, that's not a blocker to us because now we have UI in the playground. If you go to add your data section, and if you click on add a data source, then you will see my previous setup, but yeah, let's start from scratch. Um, so in the data source section, we have three options. One is Azure Cognitive Search. If you click this, then you can directly connect to an Azure Cognitive Search and you can search around your uh, embeddings data in VectorDB. If you have an existing blob storage, then you can connect to a blob storage, you bring your own data, and you can also chat with your own data in this chat playground. And if you haven't done any of this before, and this is the first time you want to upload the files, you can select Upload Files. And then the next step will be creating a blob storage. If you don't have blob storage, uh, you can just click here, cre create a new Azure blob storage. Uh, and I already have a bunch of them, so I will select one. And 
you have to create the cognitive search as well. I have cognitive search as well, but if you don't have, you can click here and you have to give it an indexing name such as my docs or you can say documents. And this is a tricky and critical part. Uh, previously, a couple months back, we didn't have the vector search experience available in Azure Cognitive Search. What vector search, search mainly does is that uh, it can make a search uh, not only in the context of your uh, files, not only let's say uh, in a semantic way you can do the keyword search or semantic search, but also you can check the relevance of the data in your database regardless of the type of your data. It can be a document, it can be a video, image, text, but when you actually use the vector search, you convert everything into an embeddings format. And when user asks anything, we make the search in the embeddings format and we can return more relevant results, especially uh, if we use the hybrid version of this, meaning that combination of vector search plus semantic, for example, is giving us the best results. And this is the recent finding, by the way. That's why that doesn't uh, cover in it. This does not exist in our custom app at the moment, but I will show you the difference in a second. So if you want to create embeddings on uh, embeddings for our documents, then we have to select an embedding model as well. That was the reason why I had two deployments. The first deployment is for chat. The second deployment is for creating embeddings. And when we have all the setup, let's click next. And this is the place where we can drag and drop our data. We have some types that uh, the playground uh, suggests us to upload the files. And let me check what kind of data we have here. Uh, I don't want to take uh, very, so much of the time, but maybe I can upload three docs and see if we can actually get answers of the questions we recently asked to our custom app as well. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's select type. Here is the critical part I mentioned earlier. We can either uh, select search, we can search vector and keywords uh, hybrid. We can also uh, search with hybrid and semantic. Uh, in this case, we can select uh, vector and keyword. So we uh, are assuming that it's going to be the most powerful one. Or actually, I'm assuming this hybrid plus semantic is the uh, vector and semantic. So in this case, it's going to be the most powerful one. And I will click next. Once our ingestion is done, we should be able to ask the same questions we asked in our custom app here and see the answers. Previously, as we were testing out, when we make some mistakes in the a question, we were not getting the answer related to the question. And in this one, assuming we are now using vector search and the hybrid, we should be able to uh, see some results, even though our question is not perfect. So um, this might take a minute or two. Meanwhile, if there is any question, maybe I can check the chat. OK, it's faster than I expected should be all done. So previously, let's check what I asked. How should I handle a company refund request? Let's ask, how should I handle a company refund, refund request? Okay, now our data set is ready. I'm assuming this is supposed to bring me the, oh, Okay. No, I, I tried this <laughs> a minute before the session, but it always happens in the live session. These glitches. Let's try again. Mm. Okay. I'm getting some issues at the moment, but maybe I can remove and test again pretty quickly. Probably because I tried this previously, it is creating me some issues. Maybe I can bring my existing data. Previously, I uploaded in the cognitive search my documents so that it is going to work. 
search type, let's select hybrid, take default, and you should be good to go. Okay, let's try again. Apologies for the issue. Okay, this uh, has exactly the same three documents I uploaded half an hour before the session. So um, this is working just fine. Um, what I want to show you here is that the difference in the result. Previously, as I showed you, when I asked the question properly, I get the result, but in the app, when I ask the question in a wrong way, for example, how should I handle a refund re request, not a company refund request, this, because of the power of vector and semantic together, this understands what I'm asking, even though it's not the perfect uh, question type, and it can find the answer of the question. Um, this is what I wanted to show today, and apologies for the glitch before. And if you have any questions, I'll spend some time in the chat. I don't want to steal some, uh, some time from the other speakers, and I can hand over right away. Thanks so much.